All right, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, and today, finally, uh, I am now doing the 2020-2021 season preview for the Flyers this year. Um, and again, you know, I talked about it the other night on the podcast. I said I was going to be doing one in these next few days. Um, and since the World Juniors was pushed back a couple days, I decided, you know what, let's do it today um, because camp does start soon. We have 22 days until the season starts now. Um, again, 56 game season, whole different divisions. You know, you're, it's all in division play. So, where do I think the Flyers are going to stand after this year? Um, you know, where do I see them in the standings, especially with a really tough division, easily the hardest division out of the four. Um, and overall, I, you know, just a look at some line combinations and things like that. So, um, just to start off, let's, let, let, let's just talk about these lines for a second here. Um, so this, th these are just the line combinations from daily face off. So this is pretty much just like the mid, the main thing that you could see. Um, and it's kind of just like stuff they put together. It's actually the exact same lines that are that are for the Flyers in NHL 21 that are you know for like the online versus buy and stuff. It's it's the exact same lines. Um, so your first line is obviously Giroux, Couturier, and Voracek. Second line Limblom, Hayes, and Konechny. Your third line is James and Reimstein, Morgan Frost, and Joel Faraby. And your fourth line is Michael Raffle, Scott Law, and Nicholas Alba Coupel. Personally. I like these. I, I I don't mind playing with these lines in the game. I think that they're actually put some pretty good lines. I think there are some things you could change, though. I feel like, I honestly feel like Konechny could play first line at some point. And, and again, it's not like the lines are going to be set all the time. And honestly, I don't really think the Flyers are going to be going into the season with, like, set lines one through four. I mean, we see the lines change so much. There's going to be a lot of combinations and a lot of things change. I feel like Limblom and Faraby could definitely play higher in the lineup as well. Definitely a guy like Albe Kubel could play more. Um, I feel like Frost could even play first line or second line at, at times because that's what the Flyers have been trying to mold him into is maybe he plays wing and or, or you know something like that. You know, he played a little bit last year with Travis Konechny and Claude Giroux on that first line for a while there. Uh, later in, you know, towards the late stages of November, early December. Um, and then obviously he ended up getting sent back down uh, around the Christmas road trip. But again, um, I think the big guy that isn't here is obviously Nolan Patrick. Um I think I think we will see Patrick this year. I do. I I am I'm very optimistic about Patrick. He is in Philly and he has been skating. So that was reported yesterday. Um and he, and head coach Elaine Vigneault did talk about that as well. So again, I I feel like we can see Patrick uh, at some point this year. I don't know if it's going to be from the start because again, uh you know yesterday Av had hinted that there's going to be more scrimmages, which we kind of already knew since there's obviously you no know, preseason games. So that means that. You know, more scrimmages in between teams and things like that to try to get these guys ready for game form because, again, it's been it's such a long layoff. So I think it makes sense, to be honest with you, um, to be doing that, and I'm excited to see what they do. I know they also did talk about for the defense using uh, Myers as a possibility for, you know, playing first pair with Ivan Provorov, and obviously we all kind of knew that. I personally think it's going to be Sanheim out the jump, but I think at some point you definitely will see Myers up there. But I think from the start, I mean, I, obviously it also depends on how, you know, know how how they see Myers in camp too but my opinion is that I think it's it's still going to be Sanheim to be honest with you um, but overall I I'm not doubting Myers at all I still think he can definitely play that um, and as for these pairings they have Provorov Myers uh, Sanheim Gustafson and Hagen Braun uh, I believe in NHL 21 from my memory I think it's Gosses bear with Braun on that third pair uh, which I know I'm kind of comparing it but it's very similar which is why I, I you know I, I just think of I, I just think like that but anyway um, I I personally do like these uh, I think the one thing I would change is that I don't think Gustafson's going to play top four I think he's a five at best to be honest with you um, I feel like Hag might be battling for a spot here this year with Ghost I'm not too sure um, I don't know if they'll use Hag in the top four. They can, but again, the Flyers have 10 possible defensemen that they could use this year. With these six here uh, in Provorov, Meyer, Sanheim, Gustafson, Hag, and Braun. And then you also can throw in Friedman, Zamula, Derek Polia, and then Shane Gossesbear. So right there, that's 10 defensemen that you could use. Um, so that is something. Now, uh, you know, another thing I want to talk about too is this power play because, you know, we all know what happened with the power play in the playoffs and how out of sync it was um personally i saw it as it's not the it, i don't think it's the players i think it's just the the situational you know where they're set up and things like that from the playoffs from what i saw their zone entries were bad they were losing a lot of the offensive zone trace face-offs if they were able to get you know get the offensive zone draw for the power play and you know i i feel like they just could not get back into the zone they passed way too much they they 
They just let up a lot of shots where they had chances to score. Um, I feel like a lot of the playoff series could have been a lot better for the Flyers if they had a better a better power play. Um, they honestly might have been able to, to cruise through Montreal a little bit easier if they had a uh, you know if they had a better power play. And I honestly think if they had a, still a good power play versus New York, they might have been able to beat the Islanders if they were able to score a couple goals on the power play because you know some of the games they it seemed like they couldn't score and a lot of their goals were five for you know five on five. But I, I really don't think the power play is going to be a problem this year. Um, I feel like it's going to get resolved. I feel like every year there's always something that's just like really bad for the Flyers. I mean, last year in 18-19, they, you know, <laughs> it, it just seemed like they couldn't win a home game. This past year, oh, they're great at the home game. So really, it changes every year. So I feel like overall, um, I, I really do think that the, that the power play is going to be better. I don't know if it's Terry and I feel like if the power play is that bad to start the season, and again, it's a shortened year, so you don't really have much time for... You really don't have much time for error. So if the power play is that bad, they might have to can Terry. And I don't know if they'll do that because, again, that's one of the guys that AV brought in. Now, are you really going to get rid of one of his guys? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, if it's not working, I think you might have to, you know, you might have to consider that. So overall, and again, I, I give Terry credit because, again, it was the same power play setup for so long. And he tried. I mean, he, he obviously we saw Drey, you know, move to the right side. And I feel like everything worked with the Flyers was when everything was back on the right side. Drew was on the left. Jake was on the right. Either Provorov, Gossespierre, Sanheim. I mean, whoever was at the point, um, you know, that could be something. I, it really makes me think how they do this, too, because they have more options. Obviously, they, they brought in Gustafson, who's a very good power play defenseman, very good offensive defenseman. So overall, um, they have a lot of options. I think that, I think that's one of the reasons why they brought in Gustafson. They want to improve the power play. Um and again, it's still another fence that they could bring in for one year uh, and things like that. So overall, um, I think the power play is going to be better. I still think the penalty kill is going to be good too. Um, again, losing Niskanen does hurt. But overall, I th- this is really still the same team from the Flyers last year. I mean, they only lost one player. And I'm not, and again, I, I kind of agree with, with Yuri Wallach on this too, is that he was saying um, a couple of days ago, I was talking to him, and he was kind of just saying like, you know, he's not necessarily worried about Niskanen as much because of, you know, they have Hart back there. And I, I agree with him. I, you know, I'm kind of the same way. Like, like when I look at Boston this year, like, oh yeah, you know, they might've lost Tory Krug, but they still have two Carras back there. You know what I mean? So it's not necessarily, you know, a, a big thing, but overall, um, again, I'm not saying it, it I'm not saying Niskanen isn't, isn't going to hurt the Flyers because it is, but I feel like it's, it's not as much of a worry as many people are making it out of, or at least that's just kind of how, how I see it. And I, I also agree with, with what you, with what Yuri said as well. Um, but overall, um, I feel like the penalty kill is going to be very good this year too. Uh, I mean, again, they lost in the skin, who was, again, their top defensive penalty killer. And right away, they, they wanted to sign Braun because, again, you don't want to lose another defenseman and you're probably your second best defensive penalty killer last year. Who Braun was very good on the penalty kill. Um, so overall, I think the penalty kill is going to be good. I didn't really see a problem with it. I thought Mike Yo did an, an absolutely outstanding job uh, with the penalty kill last year. I thought it was pretty good in the playoffs too. Um, but overall, I feel like this is going to be a good year for the Flyers. Um, again, I know you have to carry at least three goalies this year, mandatory. So the Flyers are most likely going to be carrying, obviously, Carter Hart, Elliott, and Alex Lyon. Um, so that also does leave Sandstrom and Usaminko to pretty much run Lehigh Valley if they, you know, have a season this year. I think the Phantoms will play, which would be nice if they did. But if not, it's going to be a little tricky. Um, but again, this East Division is is incredible. You have. The Bruins, the Sabres, New Jersey, the Islanders, the Rangers, our Flyers, uh, Pittsburgh, and Washington. So overall last year, uh, the Flyers went 13-5-3 against this division combined. The only team they didn't beat in the regular season was the Islanders. They went 0-2-1 versus the Islanders last year. Um, You know, overall, I think this is a good division for the Flyers because, again, from what we've seen in recent years, they play very good against good teams. That's just something that the Flyers always do. They bring their A game, and they play very good against good teams. So overall, um, I'm very excited for this. I feel like there's probably one team in this division that is not really playoff likely. It's probably in Jersey. I mean, they're in, like, a rebuilding state. But I'm not just going to throw them away either. Um, I think Buffalo can, can definitely compete for a spot. Obviously, Boston... Um, you obviously have, again, the Islanders going to the Eastern Conference Finals last year, the Rangers, who had a pretty good, a pretty solid season for, you know, for being the Rangers. They're still in that rebuild mode. They get, they get Alexi Lafreniere at the draft lottery. So again, improvements are being made. Obviously, Pittsburgh, still Crosby, Malkin, and then obviously the Capitals. They don't have Henrik Lundqvist. They have Ilya Samsonov back there. I feel like the Flyers are, are up there. Um, I think 
the Flyers and the Bruins are the two best teams with the goaltending tandems. Um, I honestly think the Flyers have the best goalie tandem in the league, to be honest with you, because I personally think Brian Elliott is better than Yara Halak. Um, but overall, uh, I feel like, you know, I am not necessarily as worried because I think the Flyers, again, they are they are a very good team and they're going to show it. Um, I'm very excited for this year. Uh, I am. I feel like I feel like you know a lot of these games are going to be good because again, you have like that rivalry. We're going to be seeing a lot of these teams a lot. That Islanders, you know, those games against the Islanders are going to be good because it's going to be a rematch, kind of like the playoffs. It's pretty much like you're playing a bunch of playoff series against these teams. Is is essentially what it is is really what it looks like. Um, but again, I mean, I, I I really do think the Flyers are going to have a really solid year this year. Uh, I don't really see a reason for them to be bad. I mean, they lose Niskanen, but you could also add, again, a healthy Oscar Lindblom getting back into that physical form. You also have, you know, a, a potential healthy Nolan Patrick. So there's two guys you can add, and that really that really does solidify their center depth, too. I mean, the depth and the young depth on this Flyers team is insane. Now, the one thing I do want to talk about, too, is just that I hope that you know, we always talk about like the young depth and the young depth and stuff. And I kind of want to, you know, talk about this too. Like just with the older guys, I just really hope some of these guys are just able to take it right from the start. You know, guys like Giroux, James Van Riemsdyk, Jake Voracek, Couturier. And again, I, I there's nothing against these guys. I just really hope that they're able to just take it right from the jump because we saw a lot of these guys struggle points wise in the playoffs took a little while to wake up guys like Giroux obviously Konechny didn't score in the playoffs so again I think these guys are going to be ready because they know and you know they have that feeling that they're just going to come in and they're going to really work I'm excited to see how they play in training camp too I think a lot of them are going to be really hungry especially the, really the whole the, really the whole lineup I think is too but I think that playoff loss last year, that could have went a lot of different ways, to be honest with you. I think the Flyers could have actually won that series. Um, but overall, I think the Flyers are going to be hungry this year. I think they're going to come into camp. They're going to be ready. Um, and overall, I, I I think the Flyers are going to have a very solid year. I do. Um, I don't know, you know, standings-wise, I think it's going to be tough because, again, as I said, I mean, really, seven of these eight teams can make the playoffs. And, and honestly, I feel like the Devils could even maybe surprise some people. You never know. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen, but, you know. Um, I honestly think the Flyers can probably finish one or two, to be honest with you. I, I, I'm i really stuck between the Flyers and the Bruins because, again, Boston is still Boston. Um, you know, they did lose Tory Krug and they don't have Pasternak for a little bit. And that's pretty much until like the middle of February. So that could be enough. But again, I mean, they still are a very good team. They're, you know, they've been one of the best teams in the league for the last, you know, for the last few years now. So I honestly think the Flyers are going to finish in first place. Um, I don't know how many points I'm thinking anywhere from 32 to 38 wins. Now, I don't know. If that's enough to get them first place, um, but again, I, I think you have to kind of look at you know the strength of their team, the strength of the other teams, and things like that. But overall, I think the Flyers are going to really finish in first, and if they don't, it's either second. I mean, it's I think they're going to be neck and neck for one or two, but I, I think right now I'm really looking for first place for the Flyers this year. Um, and, and just one thing I wanted to bring up too: this is Carter Hart's career numbers versus all these teams. So versus Boston, he's four one and zero. With a 2.7 GA, GAA and a 9.10 save percentage uh, versus the, the Buffalo Sabres, he's 2 0 0. With a uh, 1.00 goals against average and a 9.64 save percentage, really good numbers versus Buffalo. Uh, versus New Jersey, he's 2 1 0, a 198 goals against average and a 9.22 save percentage. Versus the Islanders, he's 0 2 0, a 6.23 goals against average and an 8.33 save percentage. Had a couple rough games versus the Islanders last year. He uh, gave up a lot of goals in, in some of those games. Uh, versus the versus the Rangers, he's three one and zero, a two point two five goals against average and a nine two one save percentage. Versus Pittsburgh, he's one one and zero, two fifteen goals against average, a nine three six save percentage. And versus the Capitals, he's one one and one, a two point two nine goals against average and a nine two six save percentage for Carter Hart overall against all these teams in this division. So again. I think it's going to be a really solid year for the Flyers. I think there's going to be a lot of guys that step up. I think you're going to be looking at some rookies that really can, you know, take that extra stride. I think I think the big key that you're going to notice this year for the Flyers, to me, is guys are going to take that extra step. The next step is I think that's what's going to happen with the Flyers. I think the team's going to take the next step. I think all the players, you know, the coaches, they want to take that next step and they want to, you know, get closer and closer to winning a Stanley Cup and bringing the Cup back to Philadelphia. So, 
Let me know what you guys think below uh, on my thoughts on this. What are your thoughts on this season? Are you excited for the Flyers? You think Where do you think they're going to finish in the standings and things like that? Again, you see the hoodie I have on here, the Flyer to Podcast hoodie. Uh, again, me and Amadeo really do appreciate all the support you guys have given us. You can buy you know this stuff just in time for the Christmas holidays as Christmas is in three days. Um, we have shirts, hoodies, face masks, stickers, phone cases, everything. You can all get that. The link is on my about page. It's also on my Instagram bio if you follow me there. Remember, guys, podcast articles, those links are on my channel. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys in the next one, and goodbye.